Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's my honor to uh, talk about the safety of the, uh, let's say, one of the very important aspects of getting to the sustainable future. So, yes, we know there are many ways we can achieve the net zero. One of the obvious one is its generation of the electricity in, in a, let's call it, sustainable manner. But we have to do it in a safe, safe, uh, safe way. And uh, by focusing on safety today, I'm going only to focus on um, fire safety, because I'm representing ESL and we are primarily concerned about the fire safety. And of course, the event is about the fire safety. And I don't have the headset, so I do my best to, to direct myself to the mic and deliver the presentation. Uh, just to set the scene, uh, you may or may not know that one of the largest, actually it was the largest when it was open before COP28, uh, the, the largest photovoltaic farms is located in this country. It's uh, a largest single, single farm uh, built in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi and is reaching two gigawatts of uh, solar, uh, solar power. Um, so... But that's not what I'm going to talk about, because it's well in the, deep in the desert. If there's a fire there, we will survive. Uh, I'm more concerned about uh, the systems which are located within the city limits, which are on the buildings or on the facades or on the roof. And you may not know that before the um, blackout in Spain. A few days earlier, they were able to reach 100% of electricity generation by uh, renewable energy. Not only solar, but all the, let's say, sustainable ways contributing to 100% of electricity. As we see from the reports, the solar farms, or the, the, mainly the solars, were not probably the reason of the blackout. But what I'm going to focus today is how the solar panels can create the fire hazard. Uh, one example, a few years ago, uh, the first building in Brussels, in Europe, uh, let's say the capital of the European Union as a city, so the first net zero building in uh, um, Brussels uh, was equipped with the solar facade and solar roof, I mean with integrated panels and they caught fire. Uh, it wasn't a massive fire, but uh, as you can see, the potential to development was, was quite huge because the whole building is covered, at, at least the top part of the building is covered with the panels. Um, so in my preparation to this, uh, this talk today, I thought, okay, I know I would say a lot about fire testing. I consider myself an expert, but I don't know that much about the solar panels. I'm fire engineer. Uh, I have a PhD in fire science, but uh, let's say solar panels, it's kind of a, a mystery for me as the source of the generation of the electricity. So I made the trip to the DUI Innovation Center here in uh, Emirate of Dubai, uh, let's say 40 minutes drive off to the desert. Uh, it looks like, I don't know, a structure from Star Trek, uh, because when you see it from distance, it's really uh, appealing shape. But that's, that's something um, I decided to, to, to go and see some introduction to the PV panels in this presentation. So just a few slides about history, how the panels were developed and, and how they're made before we go into the fire aspect. So the first, the first work, about, work about that, it's, it's 19th century, the French researcher. But uh, you may not know that um, I, Albert Einstein got his uh, Nobel Prize, his first Nobel Prize for his work on the photovoltaics, where he explained the, the, um, how the uh, photovoltaic effect uh, creates the electricity. I'm from Poland, a country in Europe between Germany and, and Russia, uh, and that's why I will not, uh, not be shy that one of our researchers in uh, just at the end of the second, sorry, first world war developed the process which is used to, up to today to generate the, the crystals which are used for uh, PV panels generation. But the modern panels is the work of the American researchers uh, uh, half of the 20th century Bell Laboratories. And that's how the current generated panels are, are created using their they work. What is important? The panels are made from sand. It's, not, it's mainly silica sand, 
But we start with a humble material, which is sand, and is really uh, silica sand in very abundant in the uh, in various countries, which is grown into uh, silicon, and uh, by heating and undergoing some some chemical processes, uh, and then the, they create something which is called ingot uh, in a high temperature, high pressure process, and this chunk of silicon is cut into the pieces to create wafers, and out of that we can reach to, uh, in the various steps to reach to the uh, solar cells. So, okay, we started from sand, silica sand. So you may ask the question, so where is the fuel uh, for, the, for the fire? So what is flammable here? Uh, because, you know, I've, you may have seen the news, you see in my presentation that the panels do burn. So what is burning there? Uh, so it's not only silica or silica sand uh, as a starter and then silicon, which is, uh, it can burn, but in very high temperature, it's not easy to make it burning. There's lots of other things, which mainly the polymers are the source of our fuel there and our uh, contributor to the, to the, uh, to the fire. Uh, so, uh, quick uh, overview how the panels are currently made. Without going into details, the back sheet, we, if there is no glass at the back, is very often a polymer, whatever structure, but polymers do burn. Junction box, the cables, but most importantly, the sources are encapsulated. And traditionally, they encapsulate it's a EVA, which is a, is a polymer which do burn. So that's, there's a lot of fuel here. Yeah? Um, and uh, so after, let's say, short overview how the panels are made and uh, what is the fuel there, I would, uh, I would like to, let's say, focus on, on the buildings, but for the sake of this presentation, I'm focusing on the roofs only, because that's, uh, in my opinion, more, uh, more tricky installation for the point of view of fire safety, because all, we don't quickly see the fire on the roof, that's the first thing. Uh, secondly, we don't have any detection systems, or I'm not aware of that, uh, maybe there are, uh, installed on the roofs. So if you are inside the warehouse and there is big fire on the roof, I mean, sorry, initially a small one, it takes a while before uh, you get uh, uh, some awareness that something going on, on uh, above your head. Uh, so I'm focusing on the roofs today. Uh, and because we are UAE, I would like to, uh, um, let's say, uh, say a few words how the UAE Fire Life and Safety Code uh, tackles the, the testing and, and certification of PV panels. And we are quite lucky here because the UAE code uh, takes good bits from various, uh, various economies. So there are bits taken from American approach, but also from European approach and British, if we treat them separately. And this is combined in quite a nice way uh, in, into one uh, rather comprehensive uh, document, uh, PV panels. So we have a panels which are integrated into the building, and we have the panels which are added to the building. So BIPV, BAPV. Um, the panels which goes on the roof usually are uh, not integrated, but added to the building. And that's where, where I'm focusing today. The code is asking um, for various tests, but the, the approach currently is based on IAC 61730-2 document, which is international, uh, is international standards, which shows how the panels should be tested. There are references in the code to the UL standard, but this standard is being phased out, and, and uh, currently UL approach is harmonized with this IAC document with some national differences. Um, there are various electrical tests of fire panels, but there is a section where we where we look into the fire safety aspects of the panels. So there are two tests where we check if the panels will, uh, let's say, not spread the fire if there is an external source of the fire, and this this may be very important in let's say in the uh, environment when we have the. Uh, wildlife uh, interface with uh, with uh, with the city, but there are three tests which looks for the electrical safety, which can result in the in the fire. Um, and so so basically, uh, we abuse the panels uh, in various electrical manners, and then check if they catch a fire, 
or we abuse the panels by subjecting them to, to, if, to actual fire itself. The first test is really, it's, it's, it's uh, how to say, it shouldn't be there because it's, it's not, not, proper, not proper fire test. You take a, f a fire size uh, of a flame, uh, sort of the lighter flame and expose it and check if something is happening. So we can call it the screening test, but I haven't seen any, I haven't seen my 20 years of experience any product which failed this test. So it's really, it's really, I mean, we have a client recently which came to us and said that his, his product is it's fire resistant, and I said that previously, and we asked him how, how you know that? And he said he used the lighter and he didn't catch a fire. So, uh, unfortunately, this test is still, still there, but then we go to something more serious. Um, um, uh, in Europe, panels are uh, tested in many countries only by, by putting the, um, the small wooden creep uh, on top of the panels. Luckily here, we, uh, the country adopted more stringent approach where, uh, where we test um, the panels with severe fire on the top. And in certain situations, we can also expose them to the flames under, underneath. Uh, so one of the approach adopted by UAE is the American either ASTM test or UL, UL test, where uh, the panels are exposed to, to, let's say, significant abuse by, by flames, simulating the wind, the heavy wind conditions, uh, and, and the tilted conditions, and then we check what's happening with the panels. Nowadays, most of the modern panels are covered with a thick layer of glass. So you don't really expect much to happen to that, to that glass. Uh, the challenge is what, you ha what will happen if the fire goes in below the panels, because you have the electrical cables there, you have the junction box, and if the panel is not covered with um, any glass here at the bottom, and the roof panels usually are not, then the, the problem can start, start, start not above the panel, but uh, on the on the oh, sorry on the void between the panel and the roof because they, they installed in various various systems of uh, of uh, racking uh, racking uh, support. Um, the British approach, which is also uh, used in this country, it's less severe because uh, although there is a, um, under pressure, there is no chance to expose the panel from below. So that gives more favorable conditions. But we're trying to phase that out in our laboratory uh, for various reasons. And uh, the main one is, is really not assessing what's, the, it's, uh, what's below. I mean, what if the fire flames goes from, from, from the bottom? Um, and uh, other reason is the panel has to be awkward shape which is not normally used in the in the uh, in the market um, apart from um, from uh, the fire test where we assess the behavior of the panel when exposed to the flames from outside we abuse the panels in electrical way what I mean we uh, supply over um, I mean reverse current uh, higher than the rating of the panels to check if the, there is been there will be no overheating and then uh, in, as a result, the fire. Uh, we look for the hot spots uh, in the solar simulator. We see if non cells are overheating, uh, being exposed to, to the shade or by, by shedding some of the, of the structures. And then uh, we check the diodes, which electrically uh, protect the panels, but uh, we abuse them and check if that's not causing the overheating and, um, mm, uh, let's say, if, uh, wrong situation for the, from the fire safety point of view. But my message uh, here today is really um, various countries have various approach to, to testing the, the solar panels for the fire safety. And um, one of the slides I was showing as a sketch that in many countries in Europe, they just ap ap apply a small wooden creep on the panel, and if this is successful, and we do, it will always be with the glass cover panels, they deem it as a safe as a safe panel, which is not correct approach because, in my opinion, because uh, the higher risk comes from underneath, and really exposing to the small wooden creep, it's not 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 really uh, abusing the panel, and uh, in a in a way that we can say it's as safe as per the standard uh, understanding of, of, of fire safety. And that will be concluding my, my presentation. I'm uh, happy to answer any questions you may have uh, later on. Okay, thank you very much.